My name is Mario Heiten, and um, I don't have a, uh, an academic background, but I come from the practical world, or the commercial world, actually, uh, communications. And uh, currently I'm writing a white paper called Instinctively Sustainable, which is a new theory for communicating with large, larger audiences about the concept of sustainability. Um, my background is in communication throughout, but uh, initially uh, I was a, a sportsman myself uh, and therefore I dealt with communication. I was selling sponsorship uh, to commercial sponsors uh, and that is the uh, basis of my, my knowledge. Uh, once I stopped my sporting career, I continued in that field, uh, uh, sponsorship and communications. And um, it occurred to me that the, the techniques that we were using were so incredibly efficient at communicating with larger audiences that I uh, had this uh, strong feeling that there should be a way of readapting those techniques in order to communicate also much more uh, important issues such as, in this case, sustainability, which I have concentrated upon using the same techniques that we used in order to sell products through sponsorship, but using them in order to communicate social messages. So that is my background, and uh, therefore my comments will not be directly uh, on, on the content of your two presentations, but uh, the perspective from the, the uh, media side of, of uh, uh, how this affects the uh, larger public. And um, I think we are all very aware of the fact of how uh, we, we heard about the difference between uh, information and knowledge and, and I found that very interesting actually because we are very clearly in, uh, in the middle of a phase of, of an explosion of information and I think that the quantification of that is that in the last two years we've published as much material as we've published in the history of, of um, what we call it, of uh, sign communication, which is a frightening prospect because surely our brains have not developed uh, at the same rhythm. So there is something to be handled there, and and as a media man, I'm I'm wondering how that is handled, and. Uh, I am observing some things that are happening that, in my mind, is exactly a consequence of this explosion of information, which I did before this presentation, confused with knowledge. Um, but I think uh, the, the population at large is often reacting like the, a deer in the headlights in face of this information. And you uh, had one description of how people reacted to that. Uh, but I think certainly what isn't happening is that this explosion of information has developed into an explosion of knowledge. I don't think that equation exists. Uh, and we are seeing a lot of uh, polarization instead and people going into each of their own pigeonholes and sort of retreating from this mass of information that uh, we are now able to access. And it should, of course, more information should eventually be positive. Uh, but I think we really need to uh, reflect on how that can be done efficiently because I don't think, as I said, that the human mind or the human cognitive capacity has developed at the same rhythm and therefore we are not able to uh, sift out from that explosion of information the knowledge that we need in order to improve the world. Coming from the media world, as I said, I am aware of many of the techniques that we use in order to communicate to larger audiences. And uh, th there's a lot of ethical issues that I'm worried about when, when I look at those techniques. Um, but I think that people seem to not be able to be sufficiently critical of the motivations of the media. I don't really come from the media world, but 
In the sponsorship world, we use the same techniques to communicate to larger audiences that the commercial media does in order to, and this is the crucial point, in order to sell their products. And that is, you know, it used to be print, now it's internet and TV, etc. And I think that is obviously a, a consequence, uh, uh, and very positive, certainly, consequence of us living in, in a democratic society. But I'm not sure if we do enough to educate the uh, upcoming generations to what the motivations of the media really are when you are in a, in a capitalistic society, where obviously media is a profit-driven industry, where uh, you have the famous expression that media tries to make out of 1% of events, they want to try, they, they want to make 99% of the news. And uh, if we observe, for instance, the uh, media, especially in, in a country like the United Kingdom, for instance, with the tabloids, uh, it, it is scary to think that a majority of the population makes their life decisions on the basis of that kind of, of information. So you talked about uh, faith, uh, of depre uh, faith depression. Um, and I think th this is what contributes to that. I'm sure there is also, you know, the evolution of the world can, can uh, cause this on, on real, um, on the reality, on the evolution of what is actually happening in reality. But I think to a large degree, and we mustn't ignore this, to a large degree, such faith depression is also caused by the way that this is actually distorted by the media in order to sell media. And I think that's a very important thing that we need to think about for the education of future generations. And I have ch three children myself, and, and I realize how important it is to really uh, make them aware of where the media is coming from. Uh, you mentioned, for instance, the frustration, fear, and anger. There was a, uh, an editorial very recently in the uh, Swedish Financial Times magazine that was addressing this issue of the angry young men, this um, group that apparently is growing. And uh, the, the point of the, the author of this editorial was that if you look at the statistics, there is no such group. It's, it's all a fantasy. And, of course, I haven't checked his data. However, uh, he was pointing to all these statistical uh, pointers uh, to demonstrate that young men today have, have it much better than any previous generation. And it is only positive looking forward as well, despite what we are trying to make out in the media and in social media uh, and, and uh, in the, the general discussion. Uh, in the public. I would encourage everybody to look at Dr. Rosling's presentations on the internet and he uh, has a very very interesting way of presenting um, the uh, evolution of different parameters in, in the world, poverty, um, equality, financial discrepancies, etc. Um, and the, the Progress is, is fantastic over the last hundred years. Uh, and I wish that more people were able to, to compare what they read and uh, hear with actual statistics, such as Dr. Rusling is helping us to do. That is my contribution from the world of media. Just to sort of be, be aware of what the media is doing.